It's Axis 1942. Hello, everyone. So, you probably noticed that as the videos have got further along in the years, they've actually got shorter. And that's because, as I've said, I think, in the at least one of the 1941 videos, as you get further into war, your options for doing things get narrower and narrower and narrower. There is one navy which tries to buck that trend, but we will get to them in a bit. Again, this is the standard format. It's five weaknesses, roughly, and it's January 19th, 1st, 1942. So, I'm no foreknowledge. But I'm not restricting budget. I mean, I start off straight away with some foreknowledge, because Japan, 1942 to 45, they produce... 550,000 tons worth of shipping versus 3.2 million from the USN. I produced 180,000 in 1941 versus 130,000 in the USN. I've started war at this point if I'm Japan. War has come. I chose when more would begin, and I am now romping along with it. What are my weaknesses? I don't have enough ships. What can I do about them? Blinking all. I don't have enough fuel. What can I do about that? Well, I can take... The Dutch territories. Java, Sumatra. Malaya to an extent to get rubber. But then I need to get those resources back to Japan. How am I going to do that? Well, I could start constructing a railway all the way up the coast of the South China Sea, East China Sea, to get it as close to Japan as possible. So I only have to do the shortest possible route by ship to get it to the home islands, but that would be make a huge, massive railway I would have to protect, and that would bog down my army. Not doing much helpful anyway, but there again, getting the IJA and the IJN to cooperate on anything is frigging difficult. So what do we do? Well, start off by being honest. What are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? I need to churn out aircraft as fast as I can. I need to churn out air crew as fast as I can. I need to keep the level of those air crew as high as possible. So I need to start a veterancy recovery program. I can't afford to lose all my air crew. They are a valuable resource. I know that. They know that. Yes, it makes my fleet more powerful in the short term if I keep using all my veterans as my air crew. But if I find some way to recoup them, then I can generate them for a longer term. I've done all my planning based on it being a short war. The thing was, I've attacked America in December. If they were going to react out of stupidity and charge straight at me with all their fleet now, uh, what I desired in particular for the Kantai Kessen doctrine, you know, the idea they would charge at me and I would be able to fight a decisive battle as close to Japan as physically possible. Good lord. My AA gunnery is proving terrible. Then they would have done that by now. They haven't. If they haven't done it by now, the odds are they are not going to do it. If they're not going to do it, then I have to start planning for the war going on longer than I'd originally hoped. I have to start being a realist. So I need to start fortifying positions. I need to start constructing large seaplanes to help with supply and logistics of, of garrisons on those islands. And I need to start thinking things through. 
Rachel Marina. Here is the point. By this time... By this time, the Japanese are not only just allies, they are actually fighting a war alongside me. In simple terms, therefore, the only thing stopping me finding out what a decent carrier flight deck looks like is racism and hubris. However, I have gone to, America, uh, to Germany, and I have procured what was being built for the Graf Zeppelin sister ship in terms of catapults, arresters, and the track launching system. And I have picked that for my carrier, the Aquila. I'm actually of, again, unsurprisingly, of the European Axis powers. I am the one putting the most serious effort into an aircraft carrier. Would it have been any good? It's got the same problems as the Graf Zeppelin. The same flight deck issues. The same issues with this very, very constricted form of takeoff and landing. And marshalling in the cat in the hangar. Which are going to create endless operational issues. What I love, uh, love about these systems is they're not for something new. They were looked at by pretty much every carrier power in the 1920s and 1930s, some of them in publicized studies and rejected. But it's kind of like when people look at various forms of politics or other theoretical systems and their case of point is, but it wasn't done properly. I'm not the first to say this. In fact, probably the people, the person who people think is the first, is not the first to say this. It won't be the last, but the usual moral, pro the usual moral and philosophical and logical problem with that is usually the presumption is it wasn't me doing it. It's an ego argument from ego. And the trouble is, the people making this argument in this case are. <laughs> Germany, Nazi Germany, and fascist Italy, making the argument, well, it wasn't us doing it, so they didn't do it properly. 99 times out of 100, when someone says that this idea didn't work for people because they didn't do it properly, it's an argument from ego. Whatever it is. Technology, politics, whatever. What would have been more sensible for them doing? Well, I think having a carrier would be useful. I think going for the complicated launch mechanism is pointless, but I see how it mates into their capital system that they were procuring from the Germans, and that stopped them having to develop their own catapult system. But there again, developing a catapult system, an uh, accelerator system, is not beyond the wit of the Italians. In fact, I would have said such a build i.e. building a couple of units of high-tech equipment, will be right up the Italian street of we can either build things bespoke, in which case they will be amazing and brilliant, or we can build them mass production, in which case they will be terrible at this point. This is the Italian way. It's either one or the other. It's either bespoke and brilliant, or it's a mass production and terrible. It is nothing in between. So, yeah. Kriegsmarine. Someone sunk their battleship. They did get Hood for it. It was a one-for-one -one exchange, but they lost Bismarck. And you can argue, why did they lose his Bismarck? Well, because A, it went out with hardly any protection. It went out with a cruiser which goes off on its own way for its own protection, so it's a small task group. They sent it out as a solo ship in a glass drawer. It had very little in the way of long-range information because it had no carrier support or fighter or air defense. 
in that scenario to break up any incoming strikes. And let's be honest, swordfish are a perfect aircraft to focus on breaking up the strikes of. It's just... It's proof of the problem of the German Navy. Yes, they had this wonderful plan back at the beginning, Plan Z, to build this massive navy, which as I've said in other videos, was pretty much ludicrous. It was a lovely idea to have on paper, but the trouble is the person you entrust to constructing it and overseeing its construction is Goring and the Department of the Five-Year Plan. Maybe, maybe if you'd had Speer in charge earlier, you might have actually got something going on but even then to actually do that plan they would have had to stop production in the yards they did have to modernize them and expand them and built more yards physically built more yards they would have had to physically increase spending on naval maritime infrastructure so you have what you have and you fight wars with what you have and the trouble is with the worsening fate of the surface fleet because it wasn't built in a balanced manner. It doesn't didn't have enough destroyers. It lost them at Narvik. And there was pretty much no way to get them back. No way to get build them back in enough numbers. And honestly, they're concentrating more and more on smaller, faster ships. Not the ships you need to escort beasts like this to get them out. And the Graf Zeppelin, there's only so many times I can yammer on completing that. Um, yeah, I've talked about the Aquila already. <laughs> so, they are slow descending from a multi to a mono vector Kriegsmarine. A multi to a mono vector. This is often treated as the apex of the German naval power, the Type 21 submarine. It was going to be all conquering, all singing or dancing, an electric boot. And it wouldn't have been. I can tell you why. Half the trouble for the Royal Navy in dealing with the Type 7s and the mass submarine forces that the Germans were putting out in 1941, 40, in 1941-42, is because they also have to factor in the problems of dealing with surface raiders, especially potentially large surface raiders. As their numbers and activity, and eventually Hitler's own orders, reduced those surface raider actions down to zilch. You actually make the task of defending convoys that much easier. Suddenly, your convoy forces can focus on the submarine threat and the submarine threat above all else. Yes, the Arctic convoys have to still maintain some sort of capability to deal with a potential surface action threat, but the rest of them don't. This frees up forces to go fight in the Mediterranean. This frees up forces to go fight in the Far East against the Pacific, against the Japanese. This frees up the Navy, Royal Navy, more than anything else. And yes, this would have been a far more successful submarine individually. As a combatant, it's a far more dangerous threat. But it would be one threat. The threat is the submarine. And that submarine will still be faced with the problem of well, there are going to be cheap escorts, which the British, the Americans, the Canadians are churning out at an astonishing rate, surrounding every convoy or working with escort carriers and acting in hunting groups, pinging away with ASDIC. And if I sink one of them, it's not really worth my time because it's just going to reveal my position to the others and they're going to come in and hunt me down and it takes a lot longer for me to be built than it does for them and here is the horrid arithmetic 
the Americans, the Brits, and the Canadians have far more people to draw from than the Germans, and you are far more likely to survive a ship sinking than a submarine. The Germans get virtually none of their submarine crews back when they're sunk. Virtually none of them. They're, if they survive, they're usually taken prisoner. The Allies get the vast majority of their ship's crews back when they are sunk. And once you're in war this long, you're in a war which is about personnel. It's about generation of force. So what do I do if I'm the German Navy in January 1942? That's different. Panzerschief program. I've got to restart it. That's the sensible option. I've got decent 8 inch guns now. If I can produce a long range surface vessel, that's fast. Perhaps use some of the same technology I'm using from this. Has radar. Maybe has aircraft for reconnaissance. Probably should have aircraft for reconnaissance. That, combined with a program to produce more of my... Health cruiser, the auxiliary cruisers. Um... They're also sometimes referred to as a uh, handle store cruiser, uh, trade disruption oh. cruisers. But yeah, things like the Cormoran, I'd be building them and I'd be building Panzer Sheath. Would I actually get any built? I have no idea. But as long as I'm building them, I can keep the fret and the short term, it's probably going to be easier to convert the merchant raiders. So do I go out short term? Medium term, maybe I get one of the Panzer Schief in the water. I've got already got the Lutzel, which used to be the Deutschland, and I've got the Speer. If I convert them to 8 inch guns, use the weight saved, I can maybe get them faster. If I can do that, then I can keep up a surface fret. If I can keep up a surface fret long enough, then that is going to weaken the war against the submarine. If I can do that whilst also accelerating the electric boat program as fast as I can, then I still can't win the war. I'm not. It's it's like Japan. Really. There, there is literally no way for me to win the war at sea. Okay, there just isn't. Not starting in 1942. But I can maybe keep it going on longer. Disrupt, build up a supplies for D-Day, and give myself more time. And the more time I give myself, perhaps the better position I can be in. But I can't win it. There are people who like to come out with various scenarios where they claim they can win World War II for the Germans starting in 1942. I've, I've watched a couple of war games, and they basically re rely on the Allies being sufficiently moronic. There is no way they would have survived till 1942 in the first place. The industrial might of the British Empire and Dominions, the and the free nations and the USA combined is an overwhelming juggernaut that is just going to keep building. And the thing is, Germany has the same issue as Britain does. They have nowhere which is really safe from bombing to build stuff. So their production lines are constantly getting disrupted. Things like ball bearings batteries, supplies of critical oils and lubricants, 
It's one of the things about the British that's really annoying for the Germans and the Axis powers in World War II is the British thanks to intelligence. And not just the breaking of the Enigma Code, but signals and traffic analysis that they do at Bletchley Park, which is a far bigger thing at Bletchley Park. And a lot of other intelligence gathered through SOE, etc. They are very obsessed with targeting the critical pinpricks. If you've got a tanker which has a critical lubricants on, which are the really expensive and difficult ones, you need only tiny amounts, but you really need those tiny amounts, you can guarantee the British will find a way to hit that shipment. That's basically British Motors Operandi 101. So, yeah, the weakness that I've got in January 1942 is I'm down surface raiders and my government doesn't want to supply big assets because if they lose them, it's a loss of face. So I need to come up with another way of doing surface raiding. Otherwise, I become a mono, uh, mono vector, vector, and frankly, that's going to make my opponent's job far too easy. And it will make it far too easy. Ryan, what have we got to come up? Five ways to fix fleets on World War, World War II, 1939 to live. And the 16th of September is 1941 to 42. Science fiction strikes again on 21st of August. That's going to be fun. That is going to be fun. Take care, everyone. Thanks for watching.